house worship today. This is a special day that the Lord has made, but also a special day for Remy and Rhea as they get baptized today. And also we're going to have some special music. And my son and his wife are here from Minnesota, so we're, we're grateful for that. 
We are also thankful for those who are listening on KBRX, welcome, and for those who will be watching later either on Facebook or maybe live streaming currently right on uh, YouTube. So uh, we're thankful for everybody that's here. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to introduce yourselves to us, hopefully you got an attendance card. Uh, as our members also make note of their attendance, uh, you'll need a baptism insert in your, from your bulletin. that will help you follow along with the order of service for baptism. We will have a children's message. I went to all the trouble to print off a picture of a well, and there's one right in front of your bulletin there. So, uh, But we'll have that for our children's message this morning. And I think that's all the announcements. The things that you're smelling are really good stuff that we're going to talk about later during announcements, but the youth are playing a brunch because we have a voters meeting after church today. So uh, hopefully you can stay for that afterwards. And all those good smells will help you be hungry and, uh, and then also what you went to stay then for our voters meeting. Let's have a word of prayer. Ask God to bless our worship. Lord God, Heavenly Father, each day is a gift from you, but this is an extra special day for, uh, for Sanderson family and, and for us as a family of faith here at Christ Lutheran. We thank you for your many blessings to us, especially the gift of your son Jesus, whose suffering and death we remember during this Lenten season, but as every Sunday is, it's time to celebrate the resurrection. We know that you're alive, and that gives us joy and peace. Help us to worship you in spirit and truth, and may we continue to be sharing your love with others as we encounter them today and throughout the week ahead. We ask your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll have our baptism hymn as our opening hymn, See Us Wonder in the Making. Uh, we'll stand for the last verse. Oh, come, let us worship the Lord. We begin our worship in the name of our own baptisms, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Our Lord commanded baptism, saying to the disciples in the last chapter of Matthew, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I'll be with you always, to the very end of the age. The holy apostles of the Lord have written the promises for you and your children, and baptism now saves you. We also learn from the word of God that we all are conceived and born sinful and are in need of forgiveness. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and everlasting condemnation. But the Father of all mercy and grace has sent his Son, Jesus Christ, who atoned for the sin of the whole world, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Receive the sign of the cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart to mark you as redeemed by Christ the crucified. 
Hear how our Lord Jesus Christ has opened the kingdom of heaven to little children. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but his disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, Let the little children come to me, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. This is the gospel of the Lord. As your task as sponsors to confess with the whole church the faith in our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in whose name this chi- chi- these children are to be baptized. And after these children have been baptized, you're at all times to remember them in your prayers, put them in mind of their baptism, and as much as in you lies, give your counsel and aid, especially if they should lose their parents, that they be brought up in the true knowledge and worship of God, and be taught the Ten Commandments, the Creed, the Lord's Prayer, And as they grow in years, you place in their hands the Holy Scriptures. Bring them to the services of God's house and provide for their further instruction in the Christian faith. They come to the sacrament of Christ's body and blood and thus abiding in their baptismal grace and in the communion with the church that they may grow up to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of Jesus Christ. This then you intend gladly and willingly to do, then say yes. Yes. Great. God enable you both to will and to do this faithful and loving work, and with his grace fulfill what we're unable to do. In order to implore the blessing of our Lord Jesus Christ upon the gathering of these children into the family of our Father, let us with all the family pray the prayer he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord preserve your coming in, and your going out from this time forth, and even forevermore. Amen. Because these children cannot speak, they can speak, right? They get the little... They can't speak for themselves about their faith. We shall all together with sponsors and with parents faithfully speak on their behalf in testimony of the forgiveness of sin and the birth of the faith, life of faith which God our Father bestows in and through baptism. Ray and Remy, do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? We do renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, we believe in God the Father Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, we believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Parents, who brings these children to be baptized? And how are these children to be named? Ray and Marie Sanderson and Remy Rose Sanderson. Okay. Let's start with Rhea. Rhea Rose, right? Rhea Marie. Excuse me. (laughs) Remy Rose. Ray. Rhea Marie. That's you? Okay. Okay. Rhea Marie Sanderson, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This must be Remy Rose. Hi, Remy Rose. Remy Rose Sanderson, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are you her godparent? Oh, you have one? Okay. She was looking at you. A 
Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you a new birth of water and a spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Peace be with you. Amen. Amen. We have a couple of burning lights. We might need to have some sponsors help me with these. Because I don't think we want to ask gravy, right? Okay, one for your sponsor for yes. Rhea. Somebody for Remy? Okay. Receive this burning light to show that you've received Christ, who is the light of the world. Live always in the light of Christ and be ever watchful for his coming, that you may meet him with joy and enter with him into the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Let us pray. Almighty, most merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and grant Rhea and Remy the new birth and holy baptism and made the members of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and heir of your heavenly kingdom. We humbly beseech you that as they have now become your children, you would keep them in their baptismal grace, that according to all your good pleasure, they may faithfully grow to lead a godly life to the praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord and giver of life, look with kindness upon the father and mother of these children and upon all, upon all our parents. Let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Enable them to be teachers and examples of righteousness for their children. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally with their children the salvation you have given them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Through baptism, God has added Ray and Remy to their own people to declare the wonderful deeds of our Savior, who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member of the body of Christ, a child of the same Heavenly Father, to work with us in his kingdom. And you, Rhea, and you, Remy, the Lord bless you in all your ways from this time forth and even forevermore. Amen. And I've got some things here for the sponsors. Rhea's sponsors. There you go. And for, actually, I'll get a certificate to, this is for you guys, right? You're the, for Remy? No, I got backwards, my bad. I'll take the certificates, you keep the sponsors. You got your hands full. There you go. You may return to your seats. And you may turn out so you can blow out the candles too. Yeah, and there's a box for those. There you go, well done. Thank thanks, you. thanks. Thank you, yeah, you can keep it, yeah. That was a pretty awesome way to start worship. Let's continue then. I invite you to please stand. We already had our invocation as we had the baptism for Rhea and Remy. So we continue with our confession of sins as we call upon God. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Continue our worship with the intro. It. We read responsibly the intro. It. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. And whose heart of the highways to Zion. How lovely is your dwelling place. O Lord of hosts. 
My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house. Ever sing your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are those whose strength is in you. In his heart are the highways to Zion. We continue with the Kyrie. <clears throat> In the season of Lent, we do not sing the hymn of praise. We continue with the salutation and collect of the day. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from your ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for today is taken from Exodus chapter 17. All the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages, according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water, and the people grumbled against Moses and said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt, to kill us and our children and our livestock with thirst? So Moses cried to the Lord, What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people, taking with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock at Horeb, and you shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the name of the place Massa and Meribah because of the quarreling of the people of Israel and because they tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We read responsibly the gradual for the season. O come, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. The founder and perfecter of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. And is seated at the right hand. The epistle reading for today is taken from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please stand as we sing the verse. We don't sing the hallelujahs during the season of Lent, so hear these words from the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. 
This will serve as the text for the sermon this morning. Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, so Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, was sitting beside the well. It was about the sixth hour. From there came a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty forever. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go and call your husband and come here. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You're right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you now have is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where you people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know, we worship what we know. For salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming, is now here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. Is that the end? Seems like there's more. So I will continue with my written out part. It's good to have a backup. The woman said to him, I know what the Messiah, oh it is. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. Ask the children come forward for a children's message. people here. Hi kids. Good morning. I have a picture here. This is the one I printed off. It's it's kind of old fashioned. You guys ever used a well before? Maybe you have some on your on your ground, on your where you live. This is a little better one on the cover of your bulletin, right? So you ever get thirsty? Yeah? What what's your favorite thing to drink? Water, that's good stuff to drink. If you didn't have something like water available, what would you drink? What's that? Soda, Soda or juice. What else? Cocoa, milk, hot tea, uh, maybe a Diet Coke. Somebody in my family might drink. Um, but yeah, we have all those different things. Now, if you um, took your drink from that, got your drink, how long do you think it might be before you're thirsty again? Would you be thirsty in a half hour? 
or an hour. You know, depends what you're doing, right? If you're outside running around, you might get thirsty faster, right? If you're sitting around watching TV or playing Xbox, it might not take you so long to get thirsty, right? Because you're not working so hard. So we had something special happen today. Did you see these two little girls got baptized? Isn't that neat? You know, you know what's inside here? Wait, what's in here? Water. You know, if I took water out of here, I could be, you know, have a little drink. Hmm. I can preach a lot longer now. So, so we can have some water. So, yeah, this is just plain water, but when God's Word's connected with it, it becomes a living water. Uh, how many of you were baptized? I thought a lot of you were. So, you know, the same thing happened for you that happened for Ray and Remy. God used water to have them come to faith because God's Word's powerful, created the whole universe with it, and when he connects it to simple water... Faith is created. What a blessing that is, right? And so Jesus is at a well in the middle of the day, and it's hot. Do you think he was thirsty? Did Jesus get thirsty? Yeah, he was really God. He was really a man, wasn't he? He really got thirsty sometimes. So he's talking to a lady about getting water, and she came in the middle of the day because her life wasn't very good, and she wasn't really, had very many friends. So the only time she came to the well was when nobody else was around. And so when she came there, she got the water, and she had to work. And she had to use one of these wells here. So it, it takes a little work, right, to put a bucket on the end of a rope and put that rope down into the well. And when it fills up with water, it's a little heavier, so you've got to pull it up. That's a lot of work, and especially if you have to do it in the middle of the day. And then she had to walk. She didn't have any pipes in her town from the well or to her house. So she had to carry the water all the way from this well to her house. So that was a lot of work. So what if someone told her, you don't have to do that anymore? Think she'd be excited about that? Yeah. Yeah, that would be really exciting, wouldn't it? Don't have to sweat, don't come in a day, do all this work. You can have living water. They can never be thirsty again. And Jesus was talking about him giving the Holy Spirit. Same thing that happened with Ray and Remy. Same thing that happened when you were baptized and when I was baptized. God gave us living water because the Holy Spirit, God's word was connected to it, gave us faith. Isn't that a great gift? Don't you think there's people that need to know about that? Do you know what the woman did when she found out about living water? She went back to her town and told everybody she knew. So I wonder what we should do now that we know we're baptized. What are you going to do? Go spread the word. Tell their people, too, about how much Jesus loves them. And that they can have living water as well. So remember that. Uh, let's have a little prayer, okay? To say thank you about that. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, thank you for water. And thank you for the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks for coming down. Seeing our worship. Where's my book? I'm missing something. <laughs> well, there it is. Now, after the children's message, we will have the creed. And let's confess together. Well, we already had that done during the baptism, so that'd be redundant, even though we did do two baptisms, but then we won't <laughs> do the creed twice. Uh, we'll continue then after the creed with the hymn of the day. Hark the voice of Jesus calling. Let's sing.
God's great mercy and peace are yours from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for the proclamation this morning is the gospel lesson from John chapter 4, the theme, the disciples at the well. In our passage for today, we encounter someone familiar to any with an even slightly greater knowledge of gospel stories. How many of you heard about the woman at the well? Yeah, we've all heard about her at some point or another. She's very popular, I guess, in some ways. It's a popular story that most of us know about. There can be no doubt that she is the main character in this story, as well she should be, but it's helpful, especially perhaps today, to focus on a lesser character or characters in this adventure. The disciples. As much as we might want to identify with the woman at the well, and many of us can and do, and justifiably, we would all do well to identify, to identify at least as closely with the disciples. Disciples are us. We are the disciples. The actions of the disciples towards Jesus and toward the woman of Samaria could be, in some sense or other, our actions. How are their actions, our actions? How do our actions mimic theirs? Well, we're told in the verse right before this one that Jesus had to go through Samaria on his journey back to Galilee. He had to. He couldn't keep himself from doing it. He couldn't continue on his ministry without going through Samaria which is very different than what he did earlier in his ministry. In fact, most Jewish people would take the extra time to go out of their way not to go through Samaria because those people weren't really good followers of Jesus. They weren't followers of Messiah, the true God, they thought. And yet this time, Jesus told, he, he told them he had to go through there, that going through Samaria was a vital part of his ministry. And Samaritans are every part as much of his target audience, as we might say today, as anyone else. So the proximity of Jesus' stop at Jacob's well ties the story tightly to Jewish heritage and tradition. And in so doing, ties the Samaritans to Jewish heritage and tradition as well. Jesus stops at Jacob's well, a famous place. I bet I bet if they had tourist signs, there'd be one that says, next stop, Jacob's Well. You're going to want to stop there. Have a glass of water. The wall drug of Samaria, probably. Okay? Have a cool glass of water. And the time is about noon. It was in the middle of the day. Light is at its brightest, most intense. And into this light steps this woman of Samaria. The disciples, however, they've gone dark. We're told they have gone into the city to buy some food. A Samaritan woman steps into the light of high noon as Jesus rests by Jacob's well. A woman, a Samaritan, coming for water in the middle of the day. The disciples are absent. Only Jesus and the Samaritan woman are present. And there's much tongue-in-cheek talk between the woman and Jesus as they kind of banter back and forth. The woman talks about water, physical water, H2O, the stuff of life, or so we should think. And what we learn from Jesus is that physical water is only stuff of part of life. There is a greater life and a more nourishing kind of water, and Jesus is the source of that water, that living water. So they talk about physical water and about the gift of God's living water. Initially, they talk past each other, and she doesn't understand it first, but by the end of their conversation, she does. Sir, give me this water, she says. And then this conversation veers sharply into discussion of true worship, of worship in spirit and truth. True worship happens neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. True worship happens rather in spirit and truth. So the Samaritans worship what they do not know, 
Jews worship what they do know because God chose to interact with, on the earth through the Jews. But there is a new day and a new way coming. God is spirit. You can't limit him by this building. God is not tied to a physical location or to a human tradition. You're starting to sound like the long-expected Messiah, the woman says. I am, using God's name, I am, Jesus replies. So Jesus identifies himself to the woman as the Messiah. And right then, the disciples return. They're shocked to see her, yet they say nothing to her. And the woman puts down her water jar and leaves. She goes into the city quickly to return with a friendly posse of Samaritans who want to meet Jesus. The disciples and the woman spend very little time in Jesus' presence at the same time. It's almost as if they repel each other. And when she arrives, they are already gone. And when they return, she puts down her water jar, which is the reason she had gone out there in the first place, puts down her water jar, and doesn't even take the water back with her, into the town. It's an amazing sight. She puts down her water jar and leaves it there because she understands that the water being discussed is not physical water, but living water, kind of the water that Rem and Rhea received today through God's word connected to ordinary water. It's not just ordinary water when God's word is connected to it. It's living water. And this Jesus is giving them living water as he speaks to them God's truth and shares with them the Holy Spirit. There's a, there's a welling up inside them, the spiritual nourishment they're going to receive from this living water. Spiritually speaking, there is no longer need for a physical water jar. It kind of hold her back to have to carry a water jar all along when she, all she needs to do is tell people about Jesus. You don't need a water jar to do that. You just need some words that God shares with you through his Bible. And as the Holy Spirit gives you words to speak to people that you encounter each and every day. Yeah, we're having a woman leading people to Jesus. Yet there is no contact between her and the disciples. They don't speak to her. They arrive, she leaves, and leaves her water jar behind. And the disciples urge Jesus to eat. And Jesus starts talking about a different kind of food as he spoke to the woman about a different kind of water. Do they understand as she did? Do we understand? Hmm. Drink the water Jesus gives, and you'll never be thirsty again. Jesus says to the Samaritan woman, Eat the food that Jesus has, and you will quickly lose interest in lunch, Jesus says to the disciples. So what is the nature of the interactions that we're seeing here? Who is this famous, mysterious woman at the well, and how is she significant to us? Well, this woman is acting like a true disciple. The true disciples that Jesus had were more concerned about making him look right, not being around a Samaritan woman. They were concerned about feeding him food so he could keep on doing his ministry. But this woman, who was not Jewish, who had not been around Jesus for the last three years, she's the one bringing people to Jesus. She's acting more like a disciple than disciples are. Kind of crazy, isn't it? Yet the Samaritans are not, strictly speaking, unchurched. And that's a good question to ask, right? Is this an example of how to approach unchurched people? In context, they practice a form of Judaism that's seen as not really official or good. It's invalid, it's heretical, it's not like the established church does. Uh, former, the right kind of orthodoxy, right? What kind of ducks should you have? You should have orthodox, right? Uh, uh, but the, hence the Samaritans go to an expression of church that's different than what Jesus and the disciples had grew up with. It's different. It was regarded by the Jews as false and inadequate. Note that Jesus does not draw them back to do the church like they do. He didn't say, well, if you're really going to be a good God follower, do it exactly like I did growing up. He doesn't say that. Jesus comes to the woman at the well 
and through her to them, offering something new. That to which the religious life is supposed to be pointing, to which is supposed to be drawing everyone. Jesus offers a real relationship with God on earth. God in the flesh. God among us. Living water. Real food to them and to us. Neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. But where then? Nowhere. True worship, Jesus says, doesn't happen here or there or in anywhere, in any physical location. It happens in spirit and truth. Do disciples worship in spirit and truth any more than the Samaritan woman? No, spirit and truth is spirit and truth, wherever it is and whoever's doing it. Samaritans worship what they do not know. Jews worship what they do know because God chose to interact with them. But there's a new day coming that God is spirit and he's not tied to a location. And the disciples get this. And the disciples are us. They keep on coming. The disciples, the church, respond by confusing food that we physically consume with the food that Jesus is talking about. Jesus tells the Samaritan woman, go and call your husband. Uh, not a really nice thing to say, was it? Jesus tells disciples, look around you. See how the fields are ripe for harvesting. Different commands to different people in different situations. The fields are indeed still ripe for the harvest. Who are the others who have worked hard to provide a harvest for the disciples to reap. Well, in this case, it's the Samaritan woman. She has sown a harvest amongst the people in her town. And it's up to the disciples, to us, the church, to go about in that harvest. To sow them, to bring them in. To show them Jesus, to tell them to Jesus, bring them to Jesus. To encourage, to equip, to enable, and to reap the harvest sown by Jesus. So... May we look with eyes unclouded by our orthodox our orthodoxies to where outsiders bring their people to Jesus. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God pass as all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in true faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please be seated as we have some special music. Originally, I was going to do a song with my wife, but her voice is not quite there this morning, so I switched it up a little bit. So I was going to do a song more closely related to living water, um, but instead I'm going to do a song called Run to the Father, um, which talks about the burden of sin. And uh, when we look to the Samaritan woman, she had a burden of sin that uh, talking to Jesus, she heard the joy and the, the healing of living water that sustains and gives us life. And so as we run to the Father, um, we don't run to a God who stays there waiting for us, but runs to us and meets us where we are. I've carried a burden for too long on my own. I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. I see it now, I'm laying it down, and I know that I need you. I run to the Father, I fall into grace, I'm done with the hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, 
My soul needs a friend, so I'll run to the Father again and again and again and again. Oh, 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 you saw my condition, had a plan from the start. Your son for redemption, the price for my heart. I don't have a context for that kind of love. I don't understand, I can't comprehend. All I know is I need you. I run to the Father fall into grace I'm done with the hiding no reason to wait my heart needs a surgeon my soul needs a friend so I'll run to the Father again and again and again and again oh, oh again and again and again and again Long before my first breath Running into your arms Is running to life from death And I feel this rush deep in my chest The fury is calling out Just as I am You will be in And I know I need Hiding, no reason to wait. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend, so I'll run to the Father again and again. He's my son. He pleases me. I invite you to please stand for prayer. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord of hosts, you have brought us to dwell in your house and called us to worship you in spirit and truth. Receive our prayers and praise and hear our prayers that we would leave this place satisfied with your living water. Lord, in your mercy, in your Lord of hosts, you led your ancient people by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Lead us through the wilderness of this world by the hand of faithful pastors, that we'd be refreshed by the living water flowing from the stricken side of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, in your Lord of hosts, you have made us righteous through Jesus Christ and made peace with us by his cross. Lead us to embrace our suffering and faith as they shape us in his image and prepare us to behold your glory in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, Here Lord of hosts, you appointed your son to suffer on our behalf that we would rejoice in the hope of glory. Make all Christian fathers to stand in your grace that they would live faithfully for the sake of their families and urge them always toward eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, Here Lord of hosts, bless the nations of the world, that both citizens and authorities would seek justice, peace, 
and the common good of all. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our Lord of hosts, help the sick, the suffering, especially those who desire our prayers. Be with our missionary Chelsea Irwin in Czech Republic. Continue to bless the Tim Reichs family as they attend seminary in St. Louis. Bless our ministry planning and core team. And bless our voters meeting today. Be with all those who battle COVID. We ask for healing for Shanley Trepto after recovering from surgery as she recovers at home. Be with Baby Riggs Graff. Be with Sydney Carlson, Nicole Miller. We ask the Lord to be with Neil Kurtz as he has surgery this week. Be with all those who battle cancer, including Jolene Lichty, Karen Carlson, Mark Tin, Barb Weeding, Tracy Headland, Rachel Colliff, Elise Kelly, Rick Larson, Gary Rossiker, Beth Martinson, Carolyn Stewart, Alan Bentz, and Ann Koopman. We ask you to surround them with your love in Christ, and according to your gracious will, heal them. Comfort also those who mourn, especially the family of Alan Hines, grandfather of Ashley Bergman, and fill their hearts with a certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Lord of life, we ask you to bless those who have birthdays in our parish. We ask you to be with Roy Kurtz, Carly Zach, Junior Posti, and Jackie Myers, Eunice Mann, who has a special birthday this week, Beth Bob Mosel, Randy Stoliker, Rob Subbeck, and Lindy Stoffer. Bless these your servants with special days of celebration. Your bless your love. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, to, all, to you all hearts are open and all sins are known. Strengthen our hearts by your grace that we who daily sin much would make confession boldly and then joyfully receive your precious word of absolution. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Normally at this time, we were collecting offerings. The offering plate was at the back of church for you to leave your offerings. Thank you for your regular and faithful offerings. They can also be uh, dropped off during the week or mailed in as well. Uh, at this time, we'll have some announcements. Any announcements? I think there's a couple. Of, we got a few. Uh, again, voters meeting right after church. Right, Mr. Chairman? Yep, so... Hopefully you'll stay for that, and there's some other reasons to stay for that, too. Jackie, you're first up. First up. First up. Uh, I'm going to make a decision without asking anybody else. Let's try cards next week. It's the third, even if it's St. Pat's weekend. 6.30 next week, uh, pitch here at Christ Lutheran Church at okay. 6, 6.30. I can never remember, but come in between. <laughs> come as you are. Calling all master builders and mini builders. These are the characters of the play that they are, Sunday School is working on called Building Easter. So they are deep into construction. And today, instead of the movie day, we are going to have a play practice, I guess you might call it. So during the last hymn, I'd like to have all the Sunday School kids Go downstairs and have their breakfast. That's a treat on me. So then we can all come back up here and be ready for our practice. This play is going to be presented the Sunday after Easter. So put that on your calendar. It's going to be exciting. Okay. So kids, when you leave, go out that door. Go downstairs, get your food. When you come back upstairs, come up through the back hallway so that people leaving don't have to have... Salmon coming upstream, so, uh, so come up the back hole. Yes, Mary, good. Just want to remind everyone that the Easter lily forms are back by the offertory. Um, we have this week and next week to get them in. It's $15. Make the check to Christ Luther Church, and uh, hopefully we'll get a lot of lilies to decorate our church. Okay. Easter lilies, there's a form in there for you. Please turn those in. And last but not least, Hope. The youth breakfast, right before the voters meeting downstairs, we are having French toast, sausage, lots of fruit, and apple juice, and coffee. So Any water? The, yeah. Okay. okay. Probably yeah. water. Yeah. So before the voters meeting, come downstairs, and the youth will serve breakfast. So you love that smell? Go and get something to eat. Support the youth. And uh, get, get fed before we go to the voters meeting, which will be 
I'm sure quickly, right? Because there's just no, really aren't any action items, are there? Fall. So we're just to get reports from our boards and status updates on how our church is doing. So uh, that'll be right after worship to be able to support our youth. Any other off, other announcements before we finish up with worship? Okay. Uh, as the offerings are brought forward, then I invite you to stand as we sing our offertory hymn, Give Thanks. your kingdom and teach us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may say shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a closing hymn, When Peace Like a River. <coughs>